Video is recording. <laughs> anything else? Oh, uh, I don't have anything to open the show. Do you have anything to open the show? Um, Twin it right here. <laughs> Not good. Yeah. Um, ready, ready. You ready, ready? Ready, Freddy? Right. All right. Here we go. And now for something special. The unit is self-contained with its own saddler, farrier, wheelwright, and so on. It's a rigorous training dished on who know all there is to know about horses, and it brings results. We take you behind the scenes now to show just some of the interesting aspects of this training. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein, the best podcast to create sound of horses from the ground up. Mike Stein is a registered journeyman farrier with an APF1 accreditation. On this week's show, talking terminology, the section of the podcast where you can define terms that your veterinarian and farrier are using. This week's term, abrasion. Also, case study, Arabian gelding by the name of Fonzie, and also pictures of another case of an injured coronet heel. Is it abrasion or is it completely ripped off? All this and much, much more will be discussed here on Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. And over to my far right side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you doing? Doing all right. What? What were you going to say? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? You, you look good, Mike. You always look good when you come in here. You yeah, look 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that. <laughs> no, just, uh, you know, getting ready, pushing it the last week before going to Cincinnati. Where are you going to Cincinnati for? Oh, don't they have like a great hot dog or a soup? What is Cincinnati famous for? Famous for like food wise, hot dogs or soup. Okay, it's <laughs> it's fam it's famous for the International Healthcare Summit. Oh yes, and how can we forget? And, and what's going on there? And when's that happening? That is happening. the 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 lectures start on Tuesday of next week, and they go through Friday. And you'll have for people who are not coming, they should be there because you've got some of the some of the best of the best, and it's not. It's not necessarily Cincinnati. It's worldwide. There are lecturers. I know there's one that is coming in from Australia. There are some, several from Europe. Uh, I think you know. I don't. I don't know. I haven't completely looked at the schedule, but they they bring, they pull from around the world. Is it a three day event? How long is the whole entire event? Four. Four. It's four days. Four days of lectures, yes. Okay. Is there like a main guest speaker, like, you know, the first day or all the the D-list? I don't want to say D-list because everyone's valuable in their own right mind. But is there like a, you know, a level on the first day and then everyone, the big build up to like the main ferry or like Jerry Seinfeld's going to be there and talking to you guys about something? I don't something. think Jerry's going to be there. No, they have a, a large lecture hall that there are certain points where the only thing will be going with that will be that lecture hall. And then there are points where... You will have a dozen other lecture rooms going and also something in the main lecture hall. So there's a lot to choose from. And, you know, if if you don't get in front of somebody and find something that you're interested in that can help better you as a farrier and your farrier should be doing something to better themselves as a farrier constantly throughout their whole careers or you're going backwards. Now, this this event, do you get credit for it? Through the through the IAPF, is yes, this an accredited? It is accredited, and it is part of what you do or can do for further ned because they want you to have a certain amount of further ned every year to keep keep your place. And even if you're not involved in that, we should always be educating ourselves. Thoughts are always changing. There's so much to this. There's no no way any of us in our you know in a long career could cover everything that has been done or thought of out there or rethought or rebuilt or a better way and you need to be constantly improving like say if you're not going for you're not improving you're going backwards so are they going to have like vendors out there like trying to get you to buy hey this is abc hoof care or you know horseshoe our horseshoes are the best guaranteed not to do this do they have like vendors they and stuff have, selling their stuff out there or, or they, trying to get you to to use their stuff right they have a very large marketplace that they'll run you know, during the day, they'll shut down the lectures and they'll have the marketplace open a few times during the deal for a couple of days. And then, you know, the Friday is going to be lectures and then everybody's off and ho off to home. And hopefully they took home some good stuff with them. And, just, you know, there's so much information there. If your head's not spinning, you weren't doing good. And as far as horse owners, you should be encouraging your farrier to do this sort of thing. It's going to do nothing but help you out. The best tool anybody can have 
is knowledge. Now, how many people do you expect to be at this location? I don't know. I'm sure. Well, based on past years, you know, is it like 100,000 people or two? <laughs> it's a lot more than two, less than a hundred thousand. Okay, there, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's been years five, five hundred maybe. This it will be very, very easy to go there over the four days and run into people later on that you know that were there and you had no idea and you never crossed paths with them. Let's say that. All right, that sounds it's, like a that sounds like a lot of a people. A lot of a lot of fairies, a lot of veterinarians. Uh, there are some horse owners that will come because. It's it's open. I mean, the best thing a horse owner can do is have knowledge. Are they going to feed you while you're there, Mike? Because you can tell that's all I'm caring about. I, obviously, I'm starving talking about hot dog soup, and are they going to feed you at this location? Are they going to feed you there, Big there Buffet? Will, there will be food. Uh-huh. Uh, there will be, you know, whatever you want to go eat, uh-huh. wherever you want to go eat, oh. and wherever you want to pick up your check. But it's not it's not part of the uh, the hoof care summit. Like, they're, all right, 12 o'clock, guys, we're going to break for lunch. Uh, blue well, plate they, special over there in the... They do, they do have a lunch break. Okay. And there are places you can go eat. In in the, you know, in the convention center, they'll have some, some little small shops. Or you can leave and go outside, go across the road to the motels or... You know, the, there's plenty of places around there to get a bite to eat within, within walking distance. But food's not included in the ticket price. No. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Those are the best ones, though. Those are the best conferences. Those are the ones I look forward to. So, Yeah, you try to start feeding a bunch of fairies free food. I don't, you know. <laughs> Mike, be walking around. Hey, do you want your uh, meal ticket? I'll take your meal ticket. I'll take your meal ticket. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> are you going to eat here? <laughs> It'll be a nonstop buffet, and there you go. What's the biggest thing you're looking forward or toward uh, this hoof care summit. Are you looking for any particular um, speaker or lecturer, lecturer out there? Or are you just catching up with old friends and sharing what you've learned on this side of the globe? I'm pretty sure Simon Curtis is going to be doing something there, and there there is a farrier, Wesley Stewart. I think his name is. I got the name retention of a gnat coming up from Australia, and we have gone back and forth on social media and i would like to meet wesley and see what he's got going on there i mean there's plenty plenty of stuff going on there now we've got our new promotion packet that mike will be having or mike will be carrying around with him out there and he was looking over the numbers from season one to, to now this is the uh episode 11 of season four and the number five country on our list out of well, 15 countries that were downloaded in or, or heard on their, your podcast number five is actually australia so our big numbers over there in australia so hopefully they they'll come up and <laughs> say a couple things to you maybe i, I will i will I'll, i've got a few people i'm gonna hunt down i've got some friends coming over from a few different you know countries in europe mm-hmm. that i know are going to be there um, there are people from around this country that this is the the one time we get to catch up the only thing that I want, in Mike, person. Yes. The, el- the only thing that I want you to bring back is I want a T-shirt or a hat or something that says Hoof Care or the, the Hoof Care Summit. That's all I want. Well, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Make sure you bring your magnets and stickers and all that stuff, too. Right. All right, guys, we've got a big show to get into. Stick around. You're, looking to, you're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. You ready? Yes. <laughs> what do you, why do you say it like that? No, it's just, you know, you know. Yes, I do know. I know everything. All right, here we go. Welcome yes. back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He was the official farrier of the 2018 War with Equestrian Games. And if you have a question for Mike Stein, the way you get those questions into him or here at the podcast, go to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page says, contact us. Fill out that little form there, put your question in there, and put a return address, and Mike will send you out some magnets, some stickers and stuff that we have here in the studio just for saying thank you for being a part of the show as well. And don't forget, for every podcast we do, we have a matching video. We have a lot of pictures to get into uh, on the next segment, so make sure you go over to YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe. Got a bunch of new views on that last video. Uh, It's doing real well. And uh, Yeah, that kind of took off pretty good. It did. It did. Uh, There's a big interest for... What we were talking about last week. So if you missed that, uh, check us out over at YouTube as well. And over to my far hand side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How you doing? Doing all right. Now, talking terminology. This is a this is a new segment that's part of the show now. 
where it helps you un, un it helps you define or understand what your farrier or veterinarian is talking about. Because I know a lot of times Mike and I will be sitting here and he'll ask me a question or, or say a word and I'll be like, I have no idea what that means. So hopefully this segment will help you learn the terminologies. Just that, do like this with your head. Yes, you know. I understand. I understand. And then when I get the bill, it's like, oh, I, I don't understand. And you're like, well, I told you I had a. Now you understand. Now you got the bill. Yeah. You have a, a, flix, a split flixoid on your Mectrex. Right, exactly. <laughs> but this week, the word that we're going to talk about is abrasion, defined as a superficial injury or of the skin where the outer layer of skin and some hairs have less scraped off or uh, due to friction with an object. So abrasion. So I get an abrasion, uh, you know, I played basketball for many years. I, you know, I've fallen on the ground on the, the parquet floor and stuff, and I get some abrasions on my arms and, and knees and stuff. When you talk about abrasions on horses, where are we looking for them, where they get the most abrasions from? Well, they, I mean, they can get them on their face. They can get them on their legs. There's no telling what they do to each other when they're out in the field. There are situations in like in an orthopedic surgery way that they may intentionally create an abrasion to work with joint directions. And now explain that. How, why would they, well, that's one of those deals. It's a little out of my realm, but I know that I have pe had people where they have scraped or, or whatever, which is basically creating an abrasion. So, you know, this is a term that most of us should know because we've all fallen off a bicycle and skin or knees. And that's kind of, kind of where that is there. You know, we're, we got a list that was, we're going through like kind of one at a time and is going by the order of the list. So anyway, if you get an abrasion, it's a scuff, it's a scrape, it's a. So is there, is there a scale level for abrasions? Like this is a abrasion a, and this is abrasion Z, you know, is there, is there a scale as far as abrasion? If there is, I do not know, but I guess the size of the abrasion, there could be a scale. I don't, or, or how deep it is into the tissue. Now, from a, an abrasion, what would be the next, like, all right, it goes from abrasion to a cut. To a, like a laceration. Or, or a laceration, like okay. Yeah, so, laceration would be a, a slice. So would abrasion show blood? It certainly could, yeah. I peeled the hide off myself and got blood more than once and will again. So loss of hair. Loss of hair. Um, maybe a little bit of blood. Maybe a little bit of blood. Maybe a lot of blood. Depends on how much hide you peel off. <laughs> All right. Road rash. So a, as far as like a veterinarian, because an abrasion, it sounds like a very common term. Right. It is a very common term. So uh, the, there's no, I mean, outside uh, a veterinarian saying, you know, your horse has an abrasion on his or her. Cannon bone. Let's go with that. How's that sound? That sounds good. And you, as a farrier, you would say you have an abrasion on your, you know, if you're working on a horse, you know, I'm looking right. at this. Where would you see the most abrasions that you would have to refer to your your client that you're working with? Well, around the around the top of the hoof, on the lower leg, that kind of area, because that's where I'm handling. But, you know, there have been horses that have, you, know, you can't tell where they stick their heads. I know what they do. I know Dominique out there. Uh, she's she's out there running around our mare. And she's running around out there, and all of a sudden she'll come up and like on her face somewhere, she's like missing like a one inch square of fur somewhere. Right. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? What what's going on out here that I don't see? And then it <coughs> it kind of scars over a little bit, and then you always see that little patch that there's no hair. And so she's got a couple little abrasions like around her forehead and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ding dong. <laughs> well, you know, you know, but I guess it'd be kind of like just taking a piece of coarse sandpaper and sanding down, sanding the area off that would be an abrasion if you want to sit there and try it on yourself i'll give you some sandpaper <laughs> no i'm good uh back in my baseball days they used to call those strawberries yeah when you slide into third and you know you got the big old strawberry on your knee right so there you go yeah all right guys a lot more to get into stick around you're listening to equine dynamics with mike stein he'll be right back <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't let me know anything. Cause I guess, Hey, no smoking in the barn here, by the way. Right. <laughs> All right. And I'll, I'll see if I can ask as many questions as I can. You ready? Okay. You ready? Right. Welcome back to equine dynamics with Mike Stein. He was the 2017 eventing American eventing championship farrier. And don't forget for every podcast we do, we have a matching video and now's your chance to go over to YouTube and make sure you like, and subscribe over there. 
uh, because this segment, we're going to have a whole bunch of pictures showing a case study of a horse named Fonzie. And over my far hand side is our very own Fonzie of Equine Dynamics is Mike Stein. Hello, Travis. How no, you doing? You're supposed to go, hey. Hey. Okay. I missed, I missed the cue. Yeah, it's okay. I'm a farrier. It can't be fixed. Uh, and um, so we're going to talk about, it's an Arabian gelding by the name of Fonzie. Now, how did you come across Fonzie in the first place? Now, let me switch cameras here so we can all see Fonzie. And where are we going? Oh, we're going here. Camera six, so we can all see it. We can all be friends. So how did you come across Fonzie? Fonzie. Here's Fonzie. There he is. Fonzie is a little intense. A little is an Arabian gelding. How old? In this picture, how old is he? Okay, I'm going to go with 12 because it sounds good. Okay, I don't, I don't think I, he he was uh, he was over 10. Okay. Anyway, and I might be wrong. He could have been eight, but this is Fonzie, and Fonzie is, if you look at him, you know his pelvis is cocked back. His feet, from what I understand, it had been gone about a year without being touched. When we shot lateral x-rays, he's pretty low palmer angle all the way around. And he's just working on straightening out his feet. And we ended up doing doing some mechanical applications to help get get the alignment where it should be. Now, this side of the horse, is there a name for looking at this side of the horse? Was it? Well, you have the onside and the offside. That would be the right side, which would be the offside. The okay. onside would be the left side. All right, so this is the onside. Okay. Now, Mike, what's on his tail there so people don't freak out about that what we're looking at here? Is, if you go back, go okay. back. Go back one picture. One picture, and there is your tail back. Okay. And what's the tail back do? It protects his tail. Well, because this one... <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little Travis. I didn't say it Travis, but come Mike, on. when you sent me these pictures I'm like going what kind of show are we running here yeah I'm not going to say it on the air because a lot of people it's a tailbag show but you know looking at him from left to right can you pull him upside each other I can't no no well then don't sorry okay let's go back to the other one okay just because yep. just because all right okay. so there look at and there the difference in the shoulders from left to right. Yes, you got the mane hanging over, but we've definitely got more Oops. muscle muscle mass one sided. All right. right. Let's see. Yes, on this side here, he's right. got more muscle mass up here in the front. Right. And even back to the pelvis, he's you know the muscle there is not where it should be. If you look in the quadriceps above the stifle joint, if I had my pointer, I'd point at mm -hmm. it because everybody could see the laser pointer on the on the back leg, back leg. Oh, back leg. Up. Sorry. up forward see the dark area yes down below there there you go that would be where the quadriceps would be and he's hollowed out there pretty good if you look at the top of his rump he's flattened out boom 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 pelvis is out behind him backs down his his first thing with anything he does his head went straight up in the air and you know at this point he's ultra that's a bit of a problem and you know he wasn't that comfortable as a horse. Now, being he's got a little age on him, being he's that inverted, being that back has dropped that much, you know, there, there was that, some... That much, that is significant, Mike. I mean, that looks like he has no support. It looks like his his front legs and his back legs are basically just holding up the middle like he's got no spine right there in there, the center. It's like a suspension bridge with no suspension, Correct. right? Correct, yes, exactly. That's what it looks like. And we talk about this horse with, with kissing spine. And, you know, when you drop that back down, the spinous process come out the top, it brings them close together. You round the back up, it opens them up, right? Right. So he, he was he came, he was pretty sore backed. And at this point, he had had some handling. That's Trish. Trish had been handling him, getting, getting some manners back under control. And uh, his, I mean, his, his, this guy, his, if you moved wrong around him, his immediate, re, immediate reaction, everything was, ah, you know. Is this Trisha from, uh, from the that show? That is Trisha. Trisha Dingle? Yeah, there she is. Yep, that is at a rehab facility that was primarily geared towards rehabbing race horses and preparing them to go out to do three day eventing. That doesn't exist anymore. But I worked worked with that outfit for about four years, and because of the situation or being up there, Fonzie came in the door, and you know she's got a she's got a pretty big background with working with Arab sport horses. So to go on down the road, you know he 
we got a picture of him in turnout. Now I'm real famous for not taking pictures of stuff. At you know, he's he's at the house, he's in turnout, he's happy. But you know, with Fonzie, there was a lot of when you got him, when you let him, his head went straight up in the air. So it's working on head down, head down, head down, drop and relax, drop and relax, drop, drop and relax. And that took a little time to get him in his head. His head, if somebody's handling him, moving him, his head didn't need to go straight up because if the head goes up, back goes down, right? Right. So that took over and over and over and a lot of repetition. Um, with Fonzie, when he got strong, got where the head down was a good, natural, happy place, started leaning in towards some backing. Um, at home, I did do some work on his feet and use some mechanical advantage to change his bone column alignment. And if you go to that next picture, you can kind of start seeing him a little bit. The, the after picture. This one here. Yeah. I don't know if we have any other after pictures. This is the only one I got. That's probably the only one I've got. But, you know, you look at his quadriceps and it's a different, it's a different deal. He's still down in the back, but, you know, ligaments mm -hmm. are stretched and it's hard to get him back, but look at, you know, where he ties in to the lower back there. And that, that has come up some. Yeah. And as we talked a couple of weeks back, as far as like having a horse do essentially push ups where you tap the horse's right. chest, is that, could, kind, is kind this of, a result of doing the push ups? Kind or? of doing some push ups, kind of doing some in hand backing. Um, when, he, when he was at my house, he never, he never saw a saddle. Saddle was never put on the back. Back wasn't a good place for a saddle because you know, the weight's pushing it down. He's a little heavier here, and you know, and getting getting his feet out of out of some pain and getting his body out of some pain, and doing some body work on him. I was I was running some massages on his back with some equipment I got and and by hand, stretching and all that. But you know, you look at the you look at the 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 difference in the muscle in the back end in his hindquarters and as far as him actually having any physical work he were, he wasn't working more than 10 or 15 minutes but it was that without a rider and it was geared towards lifting lifting him up and rounding him up um he did do some lunging as we got him a little stronger spiral in spiral out we didn't do too much in one direction, not more than a minute or, minute or so, and reverse, and reverse, reverse, you because know, you don't want to get any repetitive, repetitive motion injuries. And also, you know, as far as like loading and changing, loading and changing, started off fairly flat. And on my property, it kind of rolls down towards the creek, and further towards the creek you get in the back end, the, the steeper the the grade gets. So kind of worked him worked him on that, and and you know, worked him on the area where he's constantly changing balance having to learn to carry himself. And he, you know, like I say, he never, he never was worked more than 10 minutes. And uh, at this point, he's down in Georgia. He's trail riding. He's happy. He doesn't have ultras anymore. Um, feet are good. Feet are good. I'm not 100% sure, but I think his life was geared towards being a main ring horse at one time, meaning that they were probably wearing some pads and what all. Okay. So Fonzie's down uh, being a trail rider. Now, from the pictures of of him with his back, like completely suspension mm -hmm. bridge, bridge to this, how long was that training event? How long did it take to get him to that point? He was at my house about eight months. Okay, so eight, eight months to get him to that point, to this point right, right here where he's a little bit more comfortable. You can put his head down, no saddle on him yet, but just where he's not feeling that pain where his head's always up because he's his back is sore. For yep. lack of a better term. And at that point, he went back to a farm in South Carolina after after the rehab center had closed up and started working under saddle and a little tuning up and all that and went back to Trish. And, you know, to try to really push him into a thing, he didn't need to do that at that point. He needed to relax and be happy and learn to give the easy pressure. And uh, he went on to Georgia to be a nice, quiet little trail riding horse where when he first came to my house, every time he moved around, he was going, ah, mm, you know. Yeah. And just took some he, some learning that he could be quiet with people. I don't know who, what, where, how he had been handled, but, boy, he reacted big. Really? You know, and that, that just takes time and patience. All right, guys, stick around. Uh, got another segment to get into that – 
Stick around to that YouTube channel because we got a lot more pictures coming up. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. I'm probably getting off the mic too much, aren't I? A little bit, but that's fine. I can still hear you. <laughs> and what's it called? A coronet band? Is that right? Coronet heel. Uh, injury of a coronet heel. Coronet band injury, yeah. All right. Coronet, coronet band to the heel. Ready? Yep. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He is now licensed fair. Uh, he is now a licensed thoroughbred farrier through the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission. And make sure you like and follow him on Facebook as well. Mike posts a bunch of articles, some uh, great pictures over there on his Facebook page. So it's a great follow. Um, go over to Facebook. And search Equine Dynamics Mike Stein, and you can see all that stuff as well. And if you have any questions for Mike Stein, go to equinedynamics.com. Fill out the little form at the top of the page that says contact us. Uh, put your question in there, and we'll answer it here on the air. And also, if you'd like Mike Stein to come out and perform a clinic at your event or your location, there's a section for clinics. Uh, fill that in as well, and Mike will come out and schedule you for a clinic in person. And over to my far hand side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Travis? I'm, I'm doing okay. Now, the word of the day, the word of the week that we talked about in talking terminology is abrasion. Now, the next pictures, I'm going to warn you, this is not an abrasion. This is not an abrasion. This is a little graphic. So for those of you who have weak stomachs and stuff or little kids and stuff, um, make sure you either cover their eyes or explain it to them exactly what's happening. So I'm going to switch to camera six again, and we're going to go to this abrasion of a horse that Mike sent me the picture of. That is that's Fonzie. That's Fonzie. He's busy eating. So this right here. What are we looking at here, and how did you get these pictures, or or who sent you these well, pictures? Well, this is a pit horse that I've been asked to get involved with per one of the vet clinics I work with. All right, and explain what we're looking at here. Well, this is a gash. I think, of, I think that would be closer to a, a laceration. I call that a gash. That's a gash. That's a big hole where it's really not supposed to be. Don't know how it happened. Could have got the foot hung in something. Wire, metal. I don't know how that came about. The, Could have been another friend helped stand it on the other horse. I was going to say, being that I watch all these movies that, you know, horror movies and stuff, that looks like a fast, blunt trauma to the to the hoof itself. It's fast, quick, and, you know. It was probably really quick. It was probably a lot of force to it, and it created damage. Now, what we've got to look at long term is taking care of that coronary band i don't know if that's something the vet was able to close up some or not and it kind of went in behind the coronary you know between the hoof and the you know the the bulb of the heels and it ripped and how much is going to heal up and what kind of shape are we going to have a lot of scarring in the coronary band because that's going to end up being a damaged place if for some reason we could get through that without damaging the coronary band. And if you want to see what the lateral cartilage looks like, well, there you go, because you can see it in there. Now, here's a silly question. If I was to have that gash on my foot somewhere, let's say, you know, whatever reason I got that gash, <clears throat> a horse hit me or something, and I, I, I'm exposed, like all my chunk and meats are exposed, they would try to either graft something from my upper leg or inner thigh or from my buttocks and to cover that because the skin is gone. On that right there, on that hoof right there. And well, it's opened up pretty good, yeah. So would they ever graph or do they graph skin to cover gr uh, gashes like this on a horse? Or is this strictly sew it up, let's see how it heals? You don't, you, well, you, you, know, wouldn't, you, you wouldn't pack it or anything. Depending would, on what there is above the coronary band, you may not be able to sew, sew that up where it is. Some of them you can get a few stitches in, some of them not. Because, you know, and maybe we can pull it back together. Some of it's going to be done with the wraps. And, you know, on my end, looking at stabilizing the hoof because, you know, this guy's, this guy's going to need some help on that side. We don't need that side of the hoof pushing and pulling and all that when he walks. So you would look at where can we put support? How can we take pressure off that area? And, you know, I've had some friends of mine take a look at it. And casting is, is definitely an option to help stabilize the foot. Uh, then there's a debate, do you glue the cast or not glue the casting? Right up front, I'd say probably not. And the suggestion I got was probably not. But 
because we may need to get that get it off of there we want it easy to remove in case we have to do something else to that hoof wall a z bar which would transfer the weight onto the frog and completely off that off that wall would be a good option if you have a heart bar the thing with a heart bar is it supports the supports the bone column better as far as the you know the the load of the, the foot will support the bone column the other end on this deal is this horse is not going to be ridden, not for a while. So it's not going to be like, like it, we're dealing with the force of, force of a rider against against stabilizing the bone column. So an injury like this that we're looking at here on the YouTube channel, a year, not riding, two years? What it, What's the time frame as far as the recovery, as far as getting a saddle or getting the horse back into working condition? When it happens. Oh, just on the horse's own. Don't force it. Don't force it soundness of the horse will Oops. play a big part of it mm -hmm. and you know this area has to heal up. <laughs> this area has to be given chance to heal up the best it can and we're going to have some damage coming down the hoof wall and we will have to deal with that as it comes down the hoof wall hopefully all that will heal back together reasonably well it's definitely going to leave a mark so there will be like skin and, and muscle, muscle missing from that area. Well, you're not going to have muscle missing, but you're going to have some, probably going to have some scar tissue. And <clears throat> the other end is you've cut into the lateral cartilage. So there's going to be some damage to the lateral cartilage itself as far as scarring, I'm sure. And then you'll have to deal with how you get what you get as a hoof wall growing down. And don't you have to be careful with scar tissue itself? Wouldn't that cause even... Some problems, you know, if the scar tissue tends to grow larger than the actual original. Right. Yeah, you can you get some proud flesh problems. Uh, that's something the vet's going to have to manage. And you don't want to get into a bunch of uh, a big proud flesh area. Um, hopefully we can preserve the coronary band as much as possible because the better shape it's in, the better hoof wall will grow down. And a little while back, we had a horse with a crack that I worked on where that whole area had been kind of sheared off the coronary band and the hoof wall where the crack problem was none of that back there was normal healthy hoof wall now this gash here on the on this horse's foot uh nerve damage is there nerve endings and stuff in this location there could be you know there could be possibly some nerve damage you know he, he'll walk around on it like it is but right now there's you know we got to protect the area that's damaged and get the stress off of it and do what we got to do. I have not had any other contact other than the vet sent me, sent me some stuff, talked about supporting the foot. So you haven't done anything to this horse yet? I do not know this horse. I have not heard from an owner. And until we go past that point, I'm not involved. If we do, I got an idea what we're going up against and we'll be prepared for it. So they sent you the pictures just to say, "Hey, look, what do you think, and what do you think I should do?" Kind of ref a, a, a reference point for right. You. This is this is one of the vets that I deal with on a very regular basis, and if nothing else, is to get my opinion. All right, guys, stick around. And there are certain places you shouldn't stick your foot. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys, stick around. We got one more little segment to get into, and we'll let you get back to enjoying the rest of your day. Uh, I didn't say that. We'll let you get back to doing what you got to do. Stick around. You're listening to. Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right you back. You were close. You were close. I, I was close. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you got to keep that water flowing over there. Mm -hmm. I have a drinking problem. <laughs> I spilled it. You got a hole in your lip. Mm -hmm. I literally, I, I work for um, this one radio one radio show I was on. Uh, one of our sponsors was a, um, a piercing parlor, tattoo piercing parlor. And... The and I was in my I think mid twenties late twenties, <clears throat> and every week they would come on the show and I I would get on the air a new part of my face tat or pierced, so I had this pierced you know you seen the kids with that I had all this pier I got still have scars and stuff and then all my ears pierced I think it was thirteen week it was a thirteen week contract and I had thirteen piercings in my face when the contract was done, wow, I got paid for. <laughs> And you don't still wear that stuff. When I turned 30, I was like, you know what? I saw the trend. Like, I saw, like, older guys getting their piercings done. I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy. So, when I turned 30, I pulled everything out. Right. 
I think you probably looked adorable. I was cute. I got some pictures. I'm yeah. a cute guy. Cute, cute radio guy. <laughs> you, I bet you did look good on the radio. <laughs> I always look good on the radio. That's my best side. All right, you ready? Yep. Uh, would we learn? Wrap it up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein, the best podcast to create sounder horses from the ground up. Mike Stein is a registered journeyman farrier with an APF1 accreditation. All right, what did we learn this week, guys? On this week's show, we learned uh, the talking terminology, the word abrasion. Mike, define abrasion for us. A scuff, a skin. Uh, you peeled some hide off. <laughs> Not like that last uh, picture we just saw. No. Uh, the definition is a superficial injury of the skin where the outer skin and some of the hair has been scraped off due to a friction with an object. I call it a strawberry. Like I get a little strawberry on my knee, that's a little strawberry on a horse, all right? Yeah. yeah. All right. And the Arabian gelding Fonzie, the case study. The case study. Taking your time. Explain what was wrong with Fonzie first and then what you had to Fonzie do. Fonzie was all tree. Fonzie had a in, very inverted back. Now you say all tree? Ulcery. Oh, ulcery. Stressed. It's your accent, Stressed Mike. Stressed ulcers. <laughs> it's your accent. Uh, yeah, from down here. Anyway, getting the feet under control, working on the back up, and the fact that you can make a big difference in a short amount of time if you plan it and you work through it and you do the correct exercises. And the pictures we saw of the coronet, uh, the injury on a coronet heel or the band. And uh, tell us, you know, as far as what we're looking for, as far as uh, you got these pictures of this big gash, not an abrasion. No, that's a big chunk ripped out. And uh, what you were looking for as far as like stitching it up and not putting any weight on that side well, the, of the hook. The, sti the stitching it up is, is, is going to be the vet's territory. Right. What we got to do is take you know take the movement out of that part of the foot take the pressure off of it so that the pressure is re relocated to other areas in the foot to allow it a chance to heal as best possible that would be my end of it as far as you know the vet care dealing with possible proud flesh dealing with infection dealing with that's a hard area to work with because the horse's feet are not clean i've seen again like medical shows where they would take um, medicated gauze and pack it and then wrap it. Is that something that they would do in this situation that, as well? That could be a possibility for sure. And well, you have you seen that before? I guess is the question that I have. Well, usually that's that part I'm usually not the one involved in, but yes, I have seen things okay. packed with medicated gauze. Yes. So I, I want to make sure the little pony's doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right, guys. On that note, uh, make sure you follow us on YouTube. And the way you do that is search Equine Dynamics Mike Stein over on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe. And for every podcast we do, we have a matching video, and you can see all these pictures in real time as we're talking about them here on the show. And if you have a question for Mike Stein, go over to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page, it says contact us. Fill out that little form. Make sure you put a return address. Mike will send you out some magnets, magnets, some stickers uh, for being a part of the show. And if you'd like Mike to perform a clinic out at your location or your event, uh, fill out that form as well. At the top of the page says clinics, and Mike is going to be off next week going to the Cincinnati Hoof Care Summit over in... International Hoof Care Summit put on by the American Ferris Journal. Everybody should be there. And that'll be in Cincinnati, Ohio. Right. If you're not there, you're missing out on a wonderful opportunity. All right, guys. On that note, on behalf of Mike Stein over there... Have a good one. My name's Travis Sane. See you next week. All of the doggies are in the corral. There you go. Okay. Another one in the books. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't. It doesn't start until you, you actually start talking, talking, and then you know that frog starts building, starts building. That's why I'll talk for a little bit. And this is lemon water, so a little bit of lemon water. Get that <laughs> lubed up. I must. Okay. Go see the phone. Bye.